Hey guys, what's up? This is Explain and getting started with it. I presume you've just bought it on Steam and you don't know how to get around the simulator because it is a simulator and not a game. The welcome screen will let you select what time you want to fly at and what kind of weather you want to fly and you can even track the clock as it is right now and you can select to use real weather which will download real world uh, real time updated weather which is kinda cool if you if you wanna really uh, test what the pilots has to deal with right now at any given airport in the world in the box here you have uh, a list of airports which is available all over the globe um, and it may seem a bit daunting because you don't see which country any airports uh, are in and you don't see whether it's Europe or US or whatever but if you know the name of the airport say Wilmington you also learn this uh, ICAO code the way you select aircraft is in this list here. It's neatly sorted with heavy metal, helicopters, general aviation, etc. So I like to start with this one and let's get started. Let's go into settings and adjust our render settings. Some of these settings are gonna make your computer slower. Um, adjusting some settings lower will probably not add a lot of performance or frame rate gain. So, um, first of all, HDR rendering can be expensive. You should have a fast GPU for that. 3D bump maps may also bug down your system a little bit. Shadows, I usually fly on 3D on aircraft or global medium. Uh, depending on what scenery I'm, I'm gonna fly in, uh, you will definitely notice a lot of performance gain if you use 3D on aircraft only instead of global. What this means is only the aircraft costs and receives shadow by itself, while global will cast shadows from anything, from trees, from buildings, from Lamp posts from bridges and roads, highways, um, cars, you name it, anything. And this will turn stress the GPU a lot more. Number of objects is how many automatically generated buildings there are, uh, such as buildings and um, landmarks, I guess, if there's any. Um, uh, buildings are populated in the suburbs uh, and in the cities. Uh, if you take take this at extreme, you will notice a lot of uh, performance loss in the big cities such as New York, Los Angeles, London, Paris, you know. Roads too, you can set this to none and basically have no roads. Um, extreme is let's say full res, full resolution. Tons are some roads, default are even less roads and so on. Um, trees are uh, are cool, I use populated. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that for now. Okay, back in the plane. First off, I wanna cover the basic navigation of cameras. You can use shift one through shift nine to switch camera angles. They all have different purposes. Uh, I tend to use this one the most, Shift 9 and Shift 4 because I can pan around and view the plane from all angles and I can pan around the cockpit. The way I pan around the cockpit is right click the mouse and move the mouse. Same goes for the external view right click and move the mouse there are other ways to navigate as well you can click 
go back to our cockpit. You can press Q and E on the keyboard to move horizontally and pressing shift will while doing this will move it faster. Likewise you have up and down movement which is R and F. So if you don't fancy right clicking and moving the mouse you can use the keyboard while flying. You can zoom by scrolling the uh, mouse wheel and this works in external view as well. If you don't have a joystick or a or a gamepad or a yoke, you can fly using your keyboard and mouse, which is what I usually do. You will see this cross. And if you click it, you get a square. And while I move the mouse around this in this square, you can see barely see controls down here are moving too. If I go into external view and click the cross again, notice the nose wheel is moving, the ailerons and uh, elevator are moving. Release the brakes, increase thrust, I'll add a notch of flaps, and I'll try to keep the plane steady on the center line. And we are off. If you'd like to see how this looks in sunset or dawn or, or even night, you can click and hold, you can press and hold L and K keys on the keyboard to go forward or back in time. Holding shift while doing that will make it go faster. I want to cover how to install plugins. Um, I have two plugins I can use for maps, which I purchased on the iPad AirTrack, which will give you different kinds of tools to navigate maps, um, FMC, you name it. I'll go to the links in the description below and uh, you can check it out yourself. These apps are not free, I must add. They are maybe expensive to some, but they are well worth the, the penny if you really want to get into flying. Now this one is more uh, advanced like uh, planning your your route using kind of FMC like uh, controls and, and uh, viewing. And you get these nice artificial hor horizon and PFD, as it's called. Um, to see your heading, altitude, um, what kind of navigation mode you're in, and so on. And all this is really, really, really fluid. So what I do is place my iPad below the screen and use this as my instrument instead of having to zoom in and out all the time uh, on the monitor. So I can see my altitude and speed without zooming in. This other app is more like a GPS and you download some maps on your iPad and off you go. You can navigate using real-world navigation um, maps. I've already downloaded these uh, apps and plugins from their website so I want to install them. First go to your resources and plugins folder open a zip file and drag out the version you'll be using. I'm using Windows 64-bit. bit. 64-bit, yep. And that's it. These plugins are now installed and ready to be used.
and we want to find the country we are flying in which is there we go Norway and I want to yeah three maps it's downloading download complete and now you can see we have the map available to us okay the app is set up let's create a, a route the pencil button in the top left let me add waypoints so I want to fly from the, this airport to this waypoint and over to this airport I don't know if this one actually exists in X-Plane but we'll see press the pencil button again to quit edit mode release the brakes add some travel and keep an eye out on that fork that will pull the airplane to the left which we will have to counter We are airborne, and as you can see, the plane is moving on the map. Making a left turn to align up to the the route. The button on the left corner will lock the plane to the center and we will be moving with the plane. And you can select whether you want the the map to always be north or um, or the plane uh, rotation or whether the plane heading should be up. It's a bit different and more advanced, basically. Uh, and you have an autopilot, which you do not have in the Cessna. And all of these things can be, be adjusted and used together with something called air track. Air track is a lot of different tools, as you can see here. This app will let you create waypoints or a flight plan if you like um, from any given airport to any given airport. So in this list I have a ton of departure routes and approaches from this airport. Going south and here you have a bunch of, of waypoints added automatically. I don't know all the specifics for the uh, approach. Let's see here. Which one? But this looked like it was a specific, um, a generic one. And I want to go with the ENGM. Not here. Yeah, there it is. Um, right. Like that, ILS is for automatic approach and landing stuff. All right, now all of this is plotted in to the map. By toggle to show the map really big, and I'll switch off a few things, but it won't be bugged down. Here we can see the route. Which will be flying. 
That's us. That's the route. And that's the destination airport down there. To the right. From here you can select anything. Uh, you can say, okay, I want to cruise at 20,000 feet. Vertical speed will be 2,500 feet per minute. So I could use this to to place in front of my computer now and use it to to fly basically and I uh, use it as an instrument instead of having to pan around and zoom in and out and whatnot. In the FMC you can see now it's jumped to the next waypoint. Right about here yellow and all the past ones are green and you can see um, the estimated duration for each waypoint estimated um, uh, time of ar arrival for each waypoint it's really really handy uh, we are making turn very soon here you can see it's lining up very well 